Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm here with Paul Dowsett, uh, who is an architect and specializes in many things, but one of the things we're here to talk about today is laneway housing. And I know this is a very popular topic as of late, uh, especially in the city of Toronto, but also outside of the city of Toronto, many municipalities are introducing laneway housing as a way to increase density um, in the housing market. So I'm so excited that Paul is here to share his expertise and his knowledge in this space. Before we get into it with Paul, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let's get into it, Paul. Thanks for taking some time out of your busy day to join us and talk all about one of my new favorite uh, topics, which is laneway housing. I know you have a lot of expertise in this area. Uh, before we jump into that, why don't you give us a bit of a background on who you are and what you do um, as, as an architect, or just tell us a little bit about yourself in general. Sure. Thanks a lot, Darren. Uh, absolutely my pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, so as you say, yes, I am an architect. Um, I've run my own firm for a little over 10 years. The firm is called Sustainable. I think that should probably give a fair indication of, uh, of where our headspace is at. So we try to do things that are, you know, both uh, friendly for the planet and friendly for all the living creatures on this planet, uh, humans probably first and foremost. Uh, so that's uh, that's kind of kind of what our focus is. Uh, and so we see laneway suites as as a piece of that, absolutely, because we see a way, as you mentioned in your intro, we see a way of introducing soft density. Uh, especially to our more downtown area. So it's, uh, I think laneway, laneway housing is, is a key part of this. Just off the top, you know, as you see it, what are, what are some of the benefits of, of laneway housing? You know, years ago, probably, probably almost 30 years ago now, um, my mother, here's just, you know, scrolling on the screen now, some different possibilities with, mm -hmm, uh, I love it. with, with laneway, with laneway suites. You can do all, you can do all sorts of things, you know, it's really open to your imagination, especially in these times of, of COVID. We've learned a lot about the limitations of our houses. You know, with, the, with this COVID um, and being at home, you say, yeah, this home office, that's definitely a possibility. We're finding the limitations of our homes in many ways because we're spending way more time in them than we thought we would. So two parents trying to work from home and two kids trying to go to school from home that might be problematic. And so that's, you know, that's yet another use of a laneway suite is that, you know, you could use it as your home office as, uh, um, you know, uh, one, one parent and one child could be doing their work in there while the others have found space in the main house. You know, it's, it's uh, said very proudly that there are approximately 47,000 residential lots across the city of Toronto that are zoned to permit a laneway suite because they abut onto a public laneway. But when you break it down by the different areas of the city, you can see that old Toronto, the old city of Toronto and East York carry the vast majority, carry, you know, 90% of those mm -hmm. of those applicable lots. So that's that's just something to something to bear in mind. But mm -hmm. once you once you then have a lot that abuts a lane, uh, there are some other things that you've got to that you've got to satisfy. So starting at the street, which is on the right hand side of the screen, mm -hmm. um, you either need a minimum of one meter on your property uh, between the main house and the property line. And in in many uh, places in the old city of Toronto and East York, especially that have a laneway, they then don't have a shared driveway between the houses. So we always mm -hmm. we think, oh yeah, so many houses have this big wide you know, corridor between the houses. Well, they usually don't have a lane. So then you know, uh, it's not applicable for a laneway suite. You also need, need that your lot width is a minimum of three and a half meters and that it needs to be on a lane. Uh, and you need this space between the houses uh, if you do not have, and this gets very technical and very fire code-ish, there, there are two ways that you can, you can meet the fire uh, access requirements. Either you will have the distance from the front street through this one meter side yard to the laneway suite is a maximum of 45 meters, or the distance along the laneway. So from the street that the laneway abuts, from that main street along the laneway 
is 45 meters or less to the laneway suite. Out on either of those streets, you also need to have a fire hydrant within 45 meters of where the fire truck would stop. Um, but in the city of Toronto, that one is, is really easy to comply with. Mm -hmm. Once you've crossed that hurdle, and that's the first thing that we look at uh, when somebody comes to us in our office with the idea of a laneway suite, it's the first thing we look at. Can we, can we hit that 45 meters? Then if we're, if we're accessing from the front street, we look for that one meter uh, between the, between the house and the property line. Uh, there's actually, there's actually an amendment has already been made to that. If you have a limiting dis a, a limiting distance agreement, I almost said a limiting disagreement, <laughs> a, li a limiting distance agreement with your, with your neighbor, you can provide that one meter between your house and their house. So long as there's not a fence in between or something like that. If it's a, if it's right. a kind of a shared walkway. So once you've, once you've crossed that hurdle, uh, then there's a bunch of things looking at the laneway suite itself that you need to comply with. So starting from the laneway, which is the left-hand side of the, mm -hmm. of the screen, uh, you need a minimum one and a half meter setback from the lane to the face of the laneway suite. And if you are going to have any openings on the side walls, you need to have a one and a half meter setback from the side yard. If you don't have openings in the side walls, then you don't need any setback from the side yards. You can build lot line to lot line, so long as your laneway suite is no wider than eight meters. So we had a minimum lot width of three and a half meters, and then a maximum width of the laneway suite of eight meters. So there's quite a bit of play in between those two numbers. There's also then a maximum length of the laneway. It can be a maximum of the laneway suite. It can be a maximum of 10 meters. So your maximum size box for your laneway suite is eight meters wide by 10 meters long. Okay, I'm old school, so I'm doing the math. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's 26 and a half wide, basically, yeah. right? By 33. By, uh, by 33. 33, so yep. You're looking at about... 850 square feet for the box, uh, mm -hmm. but you can, you can be more than one story, but I'm sure you're going to get into that uh, yep. next. So other little things sort of, sort of in the planned view of it, um, you know, you can have a platform or a deck on the, on the garden side of the laneway suite that encroaches into the backyard. It, it would extend the length of the building or enclo encroach into the separation distance between the main dwelling and the laneway suite it can encroach a maximum of 1.5 meters or five feet. And does it matter which level that's on, Paul? Nope, nope, it, no. can, be, it can be on either level. So I did, I did mention the separation distance between the principal residential dwelling and the laneway suite. And that separation distance is a minimum of five meters. But with that minimum, comes a maximum height of the laneway suite. Then the laneway suite is a maximum height of four meters. If the laneway suite is taller than four meters, which is 13 feet, which is the maximum garage height uh, mm -hmm. in the city of Toronto as well. Mm -hmm. if, the, if the laneway suite is taller than that four meters, then the separation distance between the two buildings needs to be 7.5 meters. We have a property that has the building ends, but we have uh, decks and we have exit staircase because it's a multi-unit building. Would those decks and staircases be included in that um, separation distance or would it literally be building to building? Is there, there's not a basement under that lower deck, is there? No, there's it's not. So good, okay, then it's, then it's building to building. Okay, the, my second question is, um, and I, I already know the answer to this, but I know that people will have this question. Can you have multi-unit in the, in the property and still have a laneway suite? Because I know some municipalities introduced laneway suites, but you could only then either have a secondary suite in the building or a laneway house, but in Toronto, it's different, right? In Toronto, it is different. You can have, you can have a secondary suite in the main dwelling and you can have a laneway suite. There's Love no it. restriction there. And also when you, when you have a laneway suite, you then don't need to provide any parking on your property. That's yeah. A, which to a, me is the greatest known. loophole ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because the, this is one of the hardest things as a developer in Toronto and as a, as an investor and, and somebody who's always looking for uh, multi-unit properties, 
the struggle is always parking, right? So if you can find a property that has multi-unit capabilities in the house and you can put a laneway suite, you eliminate the need for parking, which I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an odd one that they threw in. It baffles mm -hmm. me, but there it is. So uh, mm -hmm. this next little, uh, little diagram is from the City of Toronto's website and shows a little more three-dimensionality of, uh, of what we've been talking about here. Uh, the new idea that's indicated is in here, uh, this part of the building here that shows a slanted roof. And that occurs when you have this short uh, separation between the buildings. Like if you, were, if you were at the four meters or at the 7.5 meters in there, if your building is more than four meters tall, then you need to introduce what is called this angular plane. Uh, and that's at 45 degrees. And really the purpose of that is to allow daylight to get into this now restricted backyard. Makes sense. That's, yeah. that's, that's the new thing that we're showing, that we're showing mm -hmm. on this one. The thing that's not being shown here, uh, though I've noted at the bottom, is that within that angular plane, you could have a dormer so long as that dormer is not more than 30%, you know, virtually a third of the width of the laneway suite. Can you have a rooftop deck on your laneway suite? No. <laughs> <laughs> Green roofs are encouraged. Um, and, and that sort of green roof, you're allowed to have occasional uh, access to it. You know, much like the roof on the main house, you're allowed to have occasional access to it for repairs and such things. Um, and it's really a matter of putting up a ladder or scaffolding, putting up temporary access. I suppose it is technically possible to have a deck. So I, let, let me back up and I'll, I'll take that no away because yes, it can be done. Um, if, you, if you opt to use some of that maximum six meter height for the height of the doghouse for the stair to get up there, as well as the parapets of the of the deck. I see. Yeah. So yeah. same as like, kind of like the balcony. You can you can do it. It just has to be within the parameters of what the, they've yeah. set out. Yeah. yeah. You, you you would sacrifice you would sacrifice quite a bit for that. Yeah. yeah. So that in a nutshell are the requirements. You know, those are the those are the barriers to entry. This is this is what you need to comply with. Um, and yes, it is possible to go to the committee of adjustment and get relief. Uh, from these from these bylaw requirements, uh, but in my in my experience with laneway suites, you've got to have a really good reason for these really? uh, uh, for for wanting for wanting a variance. Um, where I've been most successful is where there has been an existing building on the property, you know, like an existing brick coach house that has been there for ages that everybody in the neighborhood is used to, that's a, that's a reasonable argument to make that why we want variances. Cause so. I imagine if, if this is the case, uh, are corner lots uh, desirable for laneway because they're already abutting a, a street? Does that change things? It, it doesn't change things. Uh, these, these bylaws don't look at it, whether it's a corner or not a corner. Um, certainly, you're well that you're well within 45 meters to the abutting street of the lane, so it's a it is a slam dunk uh, for approval for a laneway mm -hmm. suite. Um, it also gives you great possibilities for windows on the side of the laneway suite that is adjacent to the street without having to use that 1.5 meter setback from the uh, from the side property line. So mm -hmm. there are definitely advantages to laneway suites on corner lots for sure. Uh, there was also something, I, I don't know if it was on your last slide, Paul, but there is a minimum width for the laneway. Is there not that it has to, cause I know like my laneway of my property across the street is narrow. And then there's another one back here. That's much wider. So actually that was right here. You, uh, good eye right. to spot that. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and my apologies for not mentioning it. The minimum laneway width, uh, is, five meters or six meters. Now, this, this is on the city of Toronto website. And, and I don't know when that distinction comes in. <laughs> it's depending on who's the examiner. That's what yeah. I should say. Yeah. I have, I have yet, I have yet to see that show up on a, 
on a uh, zoning application and need to go to the committee of adjustment. I've I've yet to see that come into question. So, so long as they don't don't as long as they don't ask me about it, I'm just ignoring that one. Yeah, good call. So as as I was saying, here's the, the those are the 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 zoning bylaw requirements in a nutshell. Um, but uh, but these things are always changing, and there are there are different possibilities on the horizon. Yeah, I'd love to hear some of the the, um, the the future of laneway housing here. So specific to laneway suites, what's being shown here is again working its way through City Hall um, is the easing of some of those restrictions of the fire access specifically. So one thing that that they're seeing. This 45 meters from fire truck to hydrant, that stays the same uh, mm. regardless. However, where, where the easing comes in is that this length from the fire truck to the laneway suite, either along the lane or between the houses can be extended to 90 meters. So doubled, which mm. is significant. Um, yeah. And it's, as it says on the screen here with provisions and those provisions are at the bottom of the screen. So, and you have two options. Either you can put automatic sprinklers in the laneway suite and put a strobe light on the laneway so that the firefighters have, you know, a very clear indication of where the fire is along the laneway and they can see it from a distance. Um, or you can increase the spatial separation between these buildings. And that that's, that's as clear as, as we have that at the moment. You know, what, mm. how much more distance would we need here? Would that spatial separation also need to occur side to side? And would that spatial separation need to occur here? There's not a lot of clarity on this yet, um, but option two says increase the spatial separation and exposure protection. So along the sidewalls, maybe that has to be more robust non-combustible construction, maybe all the way around needs to be more not robust non-combustible construction and still put that strobe light on the laneway side. So, mm. oh, sorry, sure. one, other th one other thing that's changing in the, in the access, um, that one meter distance between the houses is being reduced to 0.9 meters, which means that many, many more properties in, because that is the most common distance between houses in the old city of Toronto. Right. So, so now and, a lot more will apply. And from what I understand too, there's like when you, when they say clearance, they literally mean clearance. If you have a hydrometer on the side of your building, they start measuring from the edge of the hydrometer. Is that correct? And, and that is the way it was or is still is today with the one meter distance. Uh, but that I'm really glad you brought that up because with this 0.9 meter clearance, they're actually accepting the fact that hydrometers and gas meters can protrude into that 0.9 meters. Mm, that's good news as so, well. Yeah. So For sure. it's all, it, it's all looking positive. What is the biggest challenge I would say with laneway suites in tying in the services to the existing building or what is the, what are the regulations there? Uh, so regulations number one are that all the services for the laneway suite have to come from the primary residence. So you cannot service the laneway suite from the laneway. And the, the thinking of that is to doubly discourage the severing of the laneway suite into its own property. Can you do a, um, a basement in a laneway suite? Like you, you can. said, you can only go one story. You can go four meters, but could you excavate down and, and do a, if you had the slope on the, on, or you wanted to do a sewage ejector? Yep. Yep. You can do a basement under a laneway suite. You can even, you can even, you know, do a basement below a garage with an apartment above. It simply, simply says that you need to have a structural slab, but mm. we're doing that all the time because cars park one above the other in parking structures all the time. So and is there a regulation on terms of how many, I'm guessing with laneway suite, you can only have one um, living dwelling per laneway suite. You couldn't divide up the laneway suite to multiple dwelling. That's the way the bylaw currently exists. And that is, I've, I've seen other people um, apply for relief from that at the committee of adjustment. Um, and it's, it's been in very specific cases where I've seen it I've seen it fly through the committee of adjustment. Uh, a corner lot uh, was one of the was one of the cases um, where it had 
had good exposure all around and the lot was super wide mm -hmm. as well so they so they it, it made some sense there to have to have more than one than one unit but that's a that's generally a tricky one I have a couple of technical questions mm -hmm. uh, because we deal with this all the time with our developments. What is the permit process like for getting laneway suites approved? Uh, if you are assuming you are going in with all the parameters met, you're just applying for a building permit. Is that correct? Yep. Uh, very standard building permit. The, the nice thing that the city has done is they've, uh, they've established uh, what you'd almost call tasks task forces within both the zoning department for the initial review and the building department. Uh, so your application ends up on the desk of somebody who's very knowledgeable about the subject, which really helps. So once you've got your zoning approved, either through the committee of adjustment or you're lucky enough to as of right tick all the boxes, it is a very straightforward permit process. The uh, question that is on everybody's mind, I'm sure that I haven't asked you yet, is what is the cost per square foot? Um, and I know that's going to range because you could do probably a varying degrees of, of, of build here. But is there an approximate cost for per square foot, including architectural fees, permit applications, all of that that you could give us? Yeah, so you're absolutely right, Darren. There's a there's a range to these things. And, and a lot of it depends upon how accessible the site is. We tell people to, um, you know, to, to budget about $400 a square foot uh, mm -hmm. for the construction with then 15% additional for uh, architectural services, structural services, surveys, um, and permits. You know, all, the, all, the, all the soft costs outside of that are about another 15%. And, and these laneway suites, um, just lend themselves so beautifully to modular construction, certainly, mm. and especially the form of modular construction that comes in panels. Uh, because while the site is being prepared, while the foundations are being, are being made, the panels can be fabricated simultaneously in a shop offsite, and they can be brought in on a flatbed truck and craned into place. And, they're, and they would go up in a day. So mm. the three-dimensionality of the box is done in a day. And especially if the ground floor is in a garage, you can use the garage part as the staging area for the construction up above it, for the finishing construction. So mm. we, where we have difficult access or you know, difficult staging areas usually, uh, we can... We can figure out ways to use the laneway suite itself as its own staging area. Do you guys do some sort of site assessment um, as, a, as a first step uh, or you know, what is the process to getting started with laneway housing? So yes, a site assessment is exactly what we do first. Um, we, we ask people to give us their address um, between what we can get from Google Satellite View and other things online. We can make a pretty good assessment um, without even visiting the site. If we, uh, if it looks possible, um, we'll then visit the site. We don't have to come in the, in the primary residence. We don't have to, we don't have to intrude at all because uh, what we can see from the laneway and, you know, and trying to get between the houses that tells us 90% of what we need to know. And then we can, we can give a first determination to people. Yes, this looks like a good candidate for a laneway suite or this is just a non-starter. Thanks again, Paul, for your time today. I really appreciate you walking us through this. Um, if you guys enjoyed the session with Paul, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit the like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions uh, for me and or for Paul. Uh, you can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenvoros.com. With that, I'll say thanks again, Paul. I appreciate the time. I know you're a busy guy, so I really, uh, it's been so valuable for you to be able to walk us through this. Um, I wish you the best of success in everything that you're up to and everything you're doing and people can reach out to you if they have further questions. I'm going to again leave your, your contact information in the description below. Great. Thank you so much, Darren. Great to chat with you again.